Through Project Up, Comcast is working to help build a future of unlimited possibilities. From connecting people to the Internet to opening doors for the next generation of innovators, entrepreneurs, and storytellers, they are helping to create a future that benefits generations to come. Comcast is committing $1 billion to reach tens of millions of people with the skills, resources, and opportunities they need to succeed in a digital world. Project Up, building a future of unlimited possibilities. Learn more at Comcast.com slash Project Up. Are you looking for a podcast that's entertaining, more bingeable than your favorite Netflix show, and informative? The Personal Finance Podcast teaches you the hacks, tips, and tactics you need to upgrade your money all while spending less and saving more. This isn't a show that teaches you to save money by clipping coupons. It's much more about learning how to build generational wealth and spending your money on the things you love. Search for the Personal Finance Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Your wallet will thank you later. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2320. Are self-directed IRAs a good idea? By Cynthia Meyer of financialfinesse.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Thanks so much for joining once again here on Optimal Finance Daily. This is the show where I read to you from some of the best money and personal finance blogs on the web every single day of the week. So without further ado, let's get right to today's post as we optimize your life. Are self-directed IRAs a good idea? By Cynthia Meyer of financialfinesse.com. If you can buy a private business, a rental property, or racehorses in your individual retirement account, or IRA, would you do so? Even if you could, would that be a wise choice? Self-directed IRAs offering non-traditional investments have become increasingly popular and more broadly available. The self-directed IRA is a traditional or Roth IRA in which the custodian, the financial institution which keeps records and reports to the IRS, permits the full range of investments allowed by law in retirement accounts. Many types of investments are permitted in IRAs, but there are certain things you can't do, like buy collectibles, such as art and coins, and life insurance, as well as investment strategies that require borrowing, such as shorting stock or certain option strategies. However, the reality is the vast majority of financial institutions limit retirement account investments to the more traditional ones, like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, CDs, and exchange-traded funds. Self-directed really means alternative investments accepted. The term self-directed is a bit off base. What it means is that alternative investments are accepted or offered by the IRA custodian. Technically, at most financial institutions, IRAs default to the more literal interpretation of self-directed and that the account owner makes the final decisions on what investments to buy or sell unless they've given discretion in writing to an investment advisor. A custodian who offers self-directed IRAs agrees to keep required records of your non-traditional investments in the IRA and report them to the IRS. The custodian may or may not offer physical custody of the investment, depending on type, or may just house the records of investment activity and valuation. Common alternative investments available in self-directed IRAs are precious metals, real estate, loans, and private equity. Certain custodians of self-directed IRA accounts will accept just about anything allowed by the IRS, including tax lien certificates and dairy cows. Very high risk. Many alternative investments available in self-directed IRAs carry a high risk of losing all or most of your money due to lack of diversification or the inherent risk of the investment itself. You may not be able to sell the investment later, lack of liquidity meaning that you won't be able to access the value of it to make distributions in retirement. Keep in mind that the entire burden of investigating the investment, doing your due diligence, is on you, the account holder. This could be a benefit when you're investing in an area of your professional expertise, such as the experienced real estate investor. However, it can also lead to fraud when investors are duped into Ponzi schemes or other types of investment scams through slick offerings and piles of legal paperwork. Beware of investing in anything you don't understand and can't explain easily to others. 
If you're considering an investment with a self-directed IRA, first read the SEC's pamphlet and do your homework. Use the checklist at the end of this post. Remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. High fees. Fees in self-directed IRAs are generally much higher than more traditional types of IRAs. Expect to pay setup fees, custodial fees, and annual fees to value the investment. Many of the types of alternative investments offered in self-directed IRAs are hard to value, so this can get quite pricey. Keep in mind that the IRA or Roth IRA is the owner of the investment, so you don't have direct control over it. With investments like real estate or a business, for example, that means you have to pay the custodian to do things like collect rent or business income. Per a Bankrate article, some custodians propose that you set up an IRA LLC to address this issue, which may give you checkbook control, but it's costly to establish and has legal risk. No matter what, make sure you do some comparison shopping for a custodian who specializes in the type of investment you want to own in your self-directed IRA. Potential tax problems. Investors often get tripped up by unexpected tax consequences in self-directed IRAs. Most importantly, in a traditional IRA, distributions and retirement are taxed as income, not the lower capital gains rate. The investor may have been better off holding the asset outside of a retirement account. Additionally, investors miss out on ongoing favorable tax treatments for some common types of investments, such as real estate. Depending on the type of investment income, a self-directed IRA may not be completely tax-deferred, and a Roth IRA may not be completely tax-free. For example, if the investment generates unrelated business income, the IRA or Roth IRA would be taxed at the high trust rates for the tax year in which it occurs. Those taxes must be paid by the IRA, not the account owner separately. Can't invest in yourself or your family. Don't get too excited about selling the family business to your IRA. Certain transactions are prohibited in retirement accounts to prevent self-dealing, including transactions with people within your linear family, such as your spouse, your parents, your children, your grandchildren, and their spouses. Most of your family could not work in or on behalf of the investment or live in a property held by the IRA. When to consider a self-directed IRA. Self-directed IRAs are not suitable for many people. Use this checklist to see if you might be a good candidate for self-directed IRA accounts. Aim for at least four out of six. Number one, I'm an accredited investor. If you don't know what that is, you probably aren't one. While you don't need to be an accredited investor to open a self-directed IRA, being one means you have the income and net worth to consider alternative investments. Number two, I don't need my IRA or Roth IRA for future retirement income. Either I'm fully on track to completely fund my retirement with my employer-sponsored retirement plan, such as a 401k, 403b, etc. Or I have a pension or other investments, such as rental income, which will fully cover my retirement income needs. Number three, I have well-diversified traditional investments in my work-sponsored and non-retirement brokerage accounts that can be liquidated to pay future living expenses if needed. Number four, I have professional expertise and experience in the self-directed IRA investment, which I'm considering. Number five, I wanna add a target percentage of precious metals to my retirement portfolio for diversification. And number six, I'm considering making a small private equity investment that might pay off big, a possible strategy in a Roth self-directed IRA, but could also go bust. You just listened to the post titled, Are Self-Directed IRAs a Good Idea? by Cynthia Meyer of financialfinesse.com. Quinton here runs a sustainable clothing brand. Hi there. He's excited that his shipping company, FedEx, has set a goal of having carbon neutral operations by 2040. Impressive. When an influencer tweeted about his recycled bamboo t shirts, Quinton unexpectedly became quite popular. I'll take it. He uses FedEx to reach new customers around the globe while making Earth a priority. FedEx, where now meets next. 
Support for this podcast comes from Delmarva Power. Now you can make saving money part of your business with Delmarva Power's Energy Savings for Business program. Designed to fit every type of business, the program offers financial incentives that can cover up to 50% of the cost to upgrade to energy-efficient lighting, HVAC, and more. By using more efficient equipment, your business will save money every month on your electric bill for years to come. Learn more at delmarva.com slash power savings. This article reminded me of a presentation I saw from my friend Sean Mullaney, also known as the Phi Tax Guy. He was exploring the most optimal location from a tax perspective for different assets known as tax basketing. And I remember him being very clear that holding real estate in a retirement vehicle isn't optimal for a few reasons. It's more beneficial to keep your real estate portfolio as a taxable investment because you can immediately depreciate your rental real estate and you may be able to deduct some or all of any rental real estate losses against other taxable income. When it comes to investing in stocks, the basis or gain or income of selling an asset is great, but those benefits are realized far into the future. When you invest in rental real estate in taxable accounts, your tax basis goes to work for you right away. Sean further explains that you can use leverage to increase the tax value of rental real estate. He provides this illustrative example. Quote, Jack and Jill have $50,000 of cash to invest in a taxable account. They've decided to invest in a $250,000 fifth floor condo to rent out. They borrow $200,000, purchase the property, and rent out the condo. In the first year, they rent out the condo for a full year and get $9,091 in depreciation deductions and assuming a 5% loan, almost $10,000 in interest deductions. Jack and Jill leveraged $50,000 into almost $19,000 in tax deductions in one year alone. In some cases, depreciation combined with other deductions causes rental real estate to produce a loss for tax purposes. Why put an asset that can generate a tax loss into a retirement account? End quote. If you'd like to dig into this more, check out the article titled Real Estate in Retirement Accounts on phytaxguy.com. And that brings us to the end of today's episode. Thanks so much for listening all the way through. And I'll catch you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.